realized I didn't have the microphone set up. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Let me just get this set up properly because it's currently in the wrong place. Oh, this is such an ad hoc setup. <laughs> Some things never change. All right, that should do. Uh, let's see if we can get a camera going. Do I have a camera set up? I don't. Wow, I am super prepared. Let's just spend a second to work out how I'm going to do this. Uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and use that as a duplicate. We'll call this Stellaris. We'll drop that and then I'll bring in Stellaris when it's time. But for now, we're just going to have the black, the black screen. Whoops. And then I disappear again. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. We're live. I don't know where to put the microphone. I could have it right here in front of me, which seems a bit annoying, but this way I can at least access the keyboard, kind of. Or I can stick it up here. But I'm always a little bit scared that you can't hear it. So then it's there on the side. Can you still hear that? In fact, what I can do is I can angle it down a bit. Because this way I can still see chat, because chat's there. Because I have a really, really ad hoc setup here. You can hear it? All right, cool. Move that across a little bit more. Hear it fine? Okay, cool. Let's do that then, because that allows me to actually access the tiny thing that is my desk. So I really wish there was an easy way for me to kind of a little bit more distant. I mean, yeah, <laughs> we'll just have to deal with that. I can move it forwards marginally and point it more towards my general direction. Might need to rebalance audio. That's true. Yeah, we can take a look at that. That That's not going to be too hard to do. Um, so, yeah. Um, how can I do this? You can probably see stuff in my background. Wait, move out the way. There we go. That That's my tiny, tiny apartment. You can see up there. Right there. I got one of those fancy Stellaris uh, jackets, which I got like yesterday. Yay. Huzzah! And then off camera over there, tiny little kitchen, little bathroom over there. This place is tiny. It is really small. Is that a bed? Yeah, behind me. Like, this is the extent of my apartment right now. I'm in a hotel room and will be for the next two months. Had any candy of the new home? They aren't really sweet over there in Stockholm, just <laughs> sweetish. Um, yes, I did. I know that's a fun syndrome, but um, they were trying to get me to eat licorice yesterday. Thankfully, I'm Dutch, so I don't mind it so much. All right, let's go and load up Stellaris, and then we can go from there. Huzzah. We're gonna get dinged, because this is the first time I'm playing Stellaris on here. <laughs> okay, so funny story. This is probably the first thing I've had to buy from Paradox in about five years. Because <laughs> we ran out of pre-generated codes, because usually we, we generate a whole list of codes in an Excel spreadsheet and then send them off to various influencers. Forgot to save one for myself. So I actually had to buy this DLC. Oh, the first DLC I release as a Paradoxian, and I have to buy it for myself. Oh dear. Welcome to my life at the moment. <laughs> Alright, so game should be starting up in the background, doing all the admin stuff. Huzzah! Getting a bunch of resubs and subs coming in. I will talk about those in just a minute. Put it on expenses. You know I probably could. <laughs> uh, Commander Faceless coming in with a 40-month resub. Thank you very much for that. Faceless, 40 months of Mordred and still sticking around. Sindrin coming in with a 33-month Had Any Candy in the New Home. The aunt's really sweet over there. Just Swedish. I thought that was a bits thing. It wasn't. Whoops. Um, I will change the sound when I'm able to do that. Locks on Ghost, thank you very much for the well, Huzzah. things are moving. Three month resub, great to see you back, thank you very much for that. Then we have got 69 Cliche 420, thank you very much for the four month resub. We have got a hype train, hype, hype, hype. Cali BG coming in with a Huzzah. 16 month resub, thank you for that. Then Commander Faceless gifting out a bunch of gift subs to Fotino DK, Sebeke, Old Bow, Simple Anarchy, and Canadian Pagan. Thank you very much for that. And wow, this is taking Huzzah. a long freaking time to load. It's on 1%. 
Actually, to be fair, when I was loading this up on my work computer, it took forever for that first time load. After that, it's super fast. It's just that first time Huzzah. takes forever. Is it just me, or is this camera actually better than the one I usually use? I kind of feel like it is. Cheetah William coming in with 613 sub. Thank you very much for that half a year. May the next half year be as good as it Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then Sindrian did actually send some bits this time. Oh yeah, bits. <laughs> Hey, fishy. Huzzah! Last man coming in with a 23 month resubscription, just one month away from those orange wings. Right, I am sadly lacking in tea right now, so I'll be right back. Huzzah! I'm gonna go really long distance to my kitchen to grab the tea, which should now be boiled, so back in a second. What was I saying? I muted myself. So, what was I saying? Um, this apartment must have known who I am, because when I arrived, it had a kettle and various teas set out. No sign of a coffee maker. No sign of coffee. Nothing like that. Despite this being Sweden, the land of coffee. I approved. Slara soundtrack is amazing. Yeah, it always has been. What else do we have? Anonymous Gift Sub has gifted subs to Myra Games. Thank you very much for that. Anonymous Myra, Huzzah. congratulations on the gifted sub. And Darth Lord Fishy coming in with a 33 month primary sub. Thank you very much for that as well. And then Fred also coming in with a 39 month prime resub as well. Thank you for that. Right. I need to work out how to add game capture. <laughs> now the microphone's in the way. Stellaris. Dot. Specific window, Stellaris. Okay. Um, then this needs to go full screen. And then it needs to go behind. There we go. So I'll probably need to move the camera itself, but we'll work that out when we're in. Welcome back, Overlord. The 3.4 Cepheus update includes major changes to subjugation vassalization systems, including negotiation of agreement terms and introducing loyalty as a resource. Planetary and sector automation have been unified under one improved system, with more options to give you control over what kind of development are automated. Deficits and revolts now a dedicated situation system that supports progressing effects that build up over time. Overlord DLC includes advanced specialised subjects, five new origins, three new enclaves, and constructions like the orbital ring, quantum catapult, hyper relay network that help you enact grand design of the galaxy. Cool. Quick start. Now I'm good. So we're going to start a new game here. I am going to create a new empire and this is obviously not on my regular computer so we're not going to have any of the usual suspects in terms of races which we've built up in the past so this is going to be a purely random game Hype Train completed level 3 awesome thank you very much for all the support everyone Dracoran thank you very much for the bits 
Why am I in Sweden? Because I work for Paradox now. Huzzah! On Stellaris, weirdly enough. And Sir Squire coming in with a 20 month primary sub. Thank you very much for that, Sir Squire. I. I. Why? How flipping cool is this? It's a coat that has stars on it. It's cool. I really like it. Too hot to wear right now, though. Huzzah! Stellar quality garment, exactly. All powerful sadist, thank you very much for the 34 month tier 3 resubscription. Thank you so, so much for that ongoing support. Just as the withdrawal symptoms were getting unbearable, a live stream to satiate my needs. Huzzah! Also, I hope all is well. All is well so far. Had my first week, started on Monday. Tiring, but cool. First week, and we already released a uh, DLC. <laughs> What do I do on the team? I'm the community manager. So my job is to talk to you guys and talk to the developers and make sure that you both align in what you want. Right, let's create a new empire. Um, I haven't actually got any real ideas of what I want to do here. So let's take a look at the origins because there's a couple of new ones now, which are the progenitor hive. This hive has gained new evolutionary advantage through semi-independent leaders. These offspring greatly improve overall proficiency, though they require constant oversight. You can employ special offspring leaders to gain experience passively. They replace spawning pools with offspring nests. Allows the building of offspring nests on the subject world. Release sectors on subjects. Huzzah! And you can construct offspring ships. However, if you don't have offspring ships present with your fleet, then you suffer some pretty hefty penalties. Uh, subterranean. Oh, we could totally do a dwarven game. Go dwarves, diggy diggy holes. I mean, that is really tempting. Okay, that's Gemini. The new vassal start seems really cool. Yeah, I was enjoying the one hour of that I got during the release stream. Private military contract to be a mega corp with a maximum amount of mercenary fleets. That's also possible. Going to be subterranean dwarves. Never done by any other streamers. No, absolutely not. Hey, Galenus. Oh, yeah, music. Let's go and sort that out first. Huzzah! Just drop the master volume. Requires a restart? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Stop lying to me, game. Let's leave you there. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to turn the effects down. I'm going to leave the music up because I really like the music in this. Turn you down and leave the advisor about there. Can you tell me how that is? Mastani gifted us up to Isdar. Thank you very much for that, Mastani. Civ name Deep Rock, Deep Rock Galactic. Very good, do. I verified the other day that that works on the laptop. Okay, how's that? Microphone generally is a little bit higher, so I could probably do a ton of it down a bit more. Actually, what I'll do is have some everything down a bit more. That doesn't seem to have done anything. How's that? Yeah, that seems better. Okay. Cursor seems to be odd. Oh yeah. It's fine on my screen. What would that be? That's really strange. Um
it's still off even when it's the right size. That's really bizarre. Well, at least the hotkeys and everything are working. I think that's just something we'll have to live with. That's really, really strange. How am I liking Sweden? I'm really liking it here. Huzzah! Glad I got away from the UK. Sindrin! Thank you very much for the gifted subs to Mr. O'Reilly, Ratlord, UCD, UCKDC, Hero Lit Type, and Gaming Charlie Huzzah. 93. Congratulations on the gifted subs. Probably a restart of the capture program would be needed. Hey, I'm not doing that. Not while I'm streaming. Because that would force me to restart the stream. Huzzah! Of which I'm missing a piece of information, yeah. I think I'm using an old version of OBS as well. That's something I need to update. Huzzah! Microphone's like right in the middle of the monitor. So I have my like secondary monitor from home, which I snuck in my uh, luggage on the way over. I don't have my main monitor, which is flipping huge. It'd be the size of this desk. Um, so I've got my tiny little laptop screen that I'm playing on. Then I have this huge monitor over here, which is chat and everything else. Um, so the one annoying thing right now is I can't actually see how many people are viewing. And I'm very curious about this. Is there a way I can set this? Um, let's see it up there. Yeah, you know what I can do? I can. Yes, it's gone. There it is. I can do this. And then I bring up the chat and notifications. And there we go, I can see everything now. Perfect. Alright. So, how's the audio now? Is the audio okay? Weird not seeing a green screen behind you. Yeah, it was just a bit too much to carry. So the situation I'm in at the moment is I am in this hotel. Basically, this is just a long stay hotel for the next two months. Uh, so in July, I move to my proper apartment where I'll then have all of my stuff shipped out. So for this, I just have the absolute minimum. Still loud? Okay. Probably because the microphone's there. So it's further away than usual. Uh, in which case, the thing I should probably do is boost the microphone. Let's try boosting you by 10. Did that work? I'm not sure it did. No. That's because it was an offset. Okay, this is a five decibel boost. How's that? Any better? solid because I do kind of like it there so it's not in front of me like this desk is tiny okay all right I'm going to say that is fine so let's just apply new game create new select so what were the other origins we've taken a look at progenitor subterranean whether avoiding predators or seeking easier access to resources, the species has evolved to live under the surface of their home world, leading to a more environmental, versatile society. We start with a cave dweller trait. Species construct cities underground, leading to a 10% increase in building and district costs and a 10% build speed reduction. Colonies suffer 75% less damage when under orbital bombardment. Mining districts are uncapped and add two extra housing, and every three building districts gives you an extra building slot. So it's kind of the opposite of the aquatics. And the problem that we face with the aquatics is we never had enough building slots. I mean, like, the, the maximum is not enough. We can still try it, though. 
Slingshot to the stars. The skies above this civilization were illuminated by shooting stars. Then came a long season of darkness. Since then, they've taken to the heavens seeking answers, beginning with what turned out to be a dormant and abandoned quantum catapult, so that we can yeet the fleet. Start with a ruined quantum catapult near your home system with the technology necessary to repair it. It'll occupy a guaranteed habitable world slot, however, so we'll have less population expansion options. And new star bases built in the remote systems cost 75% less influence. So we can have a very scattered civilization if we do slingshot. Then we've got Teachers of the Shroud. Long before the first steps into the galactic stage, the civilization has been supported and shaped by a Shroud Walker coven. We gain the latent psionic trait, granted the ability to build a Shroud Beacon on a starbase, and we start in contact with a Shroud Walker Enclave. And the Shroud Beacon is like a wormhole, I believe, which you can build in one system. And then there is the Imperial Fiefdom, which I think is really interesting. Our first endeavour beyond our home planet was a painful one, subjugated by and subjected to the whims of a foreign galactic power. Now we are working towards a future, far off as it may be, in which we no longer have to live in the shadow of another empire. And we start as the vassal of an advanced AI empire, gain the option to choose a specialist empire vassal type at the start of the game. So we start as a vassal. Slingshot might be good for corporations, that's true. I have a feeling that Space Dwarves is going to come in pretty popular. So there's a few things I do want to do with this playthrough. So one of the things is, last time we played, we were inward perfectionists. I don't want to do that. I actually want to do some diplomacy for a change. Um, uh, we want to try and take some vassals. So we'll probably do more of a federating game than a pure conquest one. But we'll definitely do some fighting at least. And I want to try the mercenaries. So maybe a Dwarven Megacorp? Slingshot's one-way traffic, yes. Yes, it is. Um, so... Government and Huzzah. ethics. Let's see what traits we can have. So Byzantine bureaucracy, more stability and unity from bureaucrats. I feel like we didn't have many problems with unity. Uh, catalytic processing, replace metallurgists with catalytic technicians who turn food into alloys instead of minerals, I guess. Yeah. Huh. Corvée system. Waves all unity costs for pop resettlement. Pop growth from immigration plus 15%. So we would be a very open society. No pacifism, pacifism gets boring. No, I agree with that. Underground start vault tech for Megacorp better living underground. It's true. Do you like Vault Galactic or Vault Tech Galactic? It's actually not a bad idea. Uh, cutthroat politics, edicts upkeep, minus 20%, code breaking plus one, so that is more um, espionage. Diplomatic Corps, available envoys plus two, diplomatic weight plus ten. Now I do want to do diplomacy, but I feel like that would make it possibly a little too easy. Administrator upkeep minus twenty percent. We're never gonna have enough of those. Uh environmentalists grants access to the Ranger Lodge. Um holding Ranger Lodge holding. That's not a building. So that's something we can build in addition to buildings which will reduce the pop consumer goods upkeep by 20%. That's pretty good. Functional architecture, building and district cost minus 15%, building slots plus one. I feel like we're dwarves, Master of All Crafters probably makes a lot of sense. A penchant for meticulous crafting lies at the heart of the society. Deft appendages and keen sensory organs aid them in creating truly wondrous treasures in the most basic of trades. Artisans are replaced with artificers. Artificers provide consumer goods as well as trade value and engineering research. And every three industrial districts you get a building slot. So if we did subterranean masterful crafters, we would get building slots from industry and also building slots from mining. So we would never need to build cities. Holdings are on other people's planets, so how much help is that at home? I've got the impression that would be something you could build on your own. 
But you're right, aren't you? In that case, I have no idea what the point of that one is. Uh, memorialists. Build the Sanctuary of Repose. Sanctuaries of Repose grant death chronicler jobs, which improve governing ethics attraction on tomb worlds and relic worlds. Death Chroniclers turn consumer goods into unity, society, and stability. Merchant guilds. Capital buildings provide merchants. Mining guilds. Minerals from minus plus one. Pleasure seekers. Decadent lifestyle under which pops have increased happiness and consumer goods upkeep. Pop growth from entertainers plus one percent. Servants gain additional amenities. Police state. Unity from enforcers and empaths and regain stability. Reanimators, we get all the necromancy stuff, and then we have these ones too. Agrarian idyll, generator, mining and agricultural districts provide one additional housing. City districts provide one less, farmers produce two amenities. However, we would need to be some kind of pacifist, which we want to avoid this time. Aristocratic elite, capital buildings replace some politician jobs with nobles. Huzzah! Construct noble estates that add additional noble jobs, grants access to the noble chateau holding and governor level cap plus one. We would need to be oligarchic or imperialist. This doesn't actually say what nobles do versus politicians, which I'm, I'm guessing the nobles are better, but it doesn't actually say. Barbaric despoilers, that allows us to go raiding. That's what I did during the release stream. Beacon of Liberty, monthly unity plus 15%, empire size from pops minus 15. In fact, I should also mention the barbaric despoilers. This does come with mercenary enclave capacity plus one. Decreased opinion from most other empires, and you can do raiding, and you can do uh, raiding wars too. Citizen service. Grants access to the recruitment office holding. Naval capacity plus 15%. Unity from soldiers plus 2. Nobles are a bit better, they provide stability. Gotcha. Yeah, we know the, uh, the mouse is bugged. Not much you can do about it. Mega corpse of new civics as well. Sweet. Right, they have different ones, don't they? We'll have a look in a minute. Death Cult can build a sacrificial temple. Death Priests turns consumer goods into unity, society, research, amenities. Mortal Initiates provide unity, society, research, and amenities. Unlocks the sacrificial edicts and sacrificial shrine holdings. Distinguished Admiralty, ship fire rate plus 10. Admirals and generals start at level 3. Admiral level cap plus 1. Fleet command limit plus 10. Exalted Priesthood. Replace politicians with high priests. Unity from priests plus one. Fanatic purifiers cannot engage in diplomacy with other species. Cannot access the galactic market. We're not doing that. Just like inward perfectionists. I'm not just going to ignore it. Uh, feudal society. Your leaders do not cost unity upkeep if employed, but they cannot be dismissed. In addition, your employed governors generate unity equal to their level. Your subjects gain an additional one monthly loyalty and do not suffer penalties from you having multiple subjects. Your subjects cannot have the following agreement to terms. Expansion perimeter, do not join subject to wars, limited diplomacy, and leaders are 50% cheaper. We require imperial authority. A feudal society might be interesting too, especially if we do want to do vassals. Freehaven, pop growth from immigration plus 15, immigration pool plus 50. Idealistic foundation, citizen pop happiness plus 10. Idealic boom. Can build Gaia Cedars on your and Vassal's worlds, ideal starting species. Facility spread across the planet progressively, making it closer to a Gaia world through four upgrade phases. And you can upgrade improved terraforming technologies. And Gaia Cedars can be constructed on additional planet types. Imperial Cult, a Edict Fund plus 100. Inward perfection we're not doing. Meritocracy leader, level cap plus one. Specialist pop resource output plus ten. Nationalistic zeal. War exhaustion gain minus twenty. Influence minus ten. Parliamentarians. Factions form the empire shortly after the game starts. Faction unity gain plus forty. Wow. Philosopher king. Rulers and governors less likely to gain negative traits. Ruler level cap plus two. That's quite good. Pompous priests can only engage in diplomacy with other empires if they are the proposer. Sorry, poppers purists, not priests. <laughs> Trait growth plus... Sorry, trust growth plus 30 and available envoys plus 2. Shadow council, election cost minus 75. Ruler pop resource output plus 10. Code breaking plus 1. And then shared burdens. Shared burden living standard on which all pops are moderate consumer goods. Huzzah! Regardless of strata. 
disables the use of most living standard grants the access to communal housing, stability plus 5, property motion time minus 45. Oh, there's warrior culture, I was wondering where that was. Slave guilds, slave pop resource output plus 10, and slave pop ratio plus 35. Technocracy, orbital buildings replace, sorry, capital buildings replace some politician jobs with science directors. Scientists have twice as high a chance to discover a technology that falls within the field of study. Research alternatives plus one. And then finally, the warrior culture replaces entertainer jobs with duelists. Duelists use alloys into unity, amenities, and naval capacity. Army damage plus 20, and then mercenary enclave capacity plus one. So if we want to do the mercenaries, and we probably also want to be a warrior, warrior culture. And then we also can have a look at the corporate options of which there are quite a few anglers we've seen before brand loyalty unity plus 15 percent edict fund plus 25 catalytic recyclers we've seen corporate hedonism decadent lifestyle that is the same as one of the other ones criminal heritage cannot form commercial packs can build branch offices on the planet of any regular empire that have no war active truce crime on branch office planets increase branch office value build crime increasing corporate buildings Infiltration and code breaking. We could do like privateers or something, I guess. Yeah, uh, I don't really know where I'm going to put this just yet. Can I put it there? Does that work? No. Let's just put you there for now. Franchising. Subjects gain additional monthly loyalty and do not suffer penalties from you having multiple subjects. So that's kind of like the feudal, but for megacorps. Megacorp franchises sounds like it could be good. Free traders, trade value plus 10, branch office plus 10. Master crafters, we've seen. Media conglomerates, war exhaustion gain, pops uh, happiness. Permanent employment, can build the posthumous employment center. Reassigns, reassigners from, sorry, reassigners turn consumer goods and either food or minerals into monthly organic pop assembly. All assembled pops will have the zombie trait. Dwarven necromancers. Huzzah! Private prospectors. Unlocked ship type, private colony ship. Empire size from systems, minus 33. Public relations, envoys and diplo weight. Ruthless competition. Leader level cap, plus one. Leader experience gain, plus 10. Code breaking, plus one. Trading post, starbase capacity, plus four. Death cult. Require spiritualist. Gospel of the masses require spiritualist. That's basically the mega church. Indentured asset. Slave pop resource output is the slave trader one. Naval contractors. Oh, here we go. Naval contractors. This is probably what we want. Naval capacity plus 15%. Mercenary enclave plus 2. Requires militarist. And then private military companies. Army starting experience plus 100, army damage plus 20, army upkeep minus 20, mercenary enclave capacity plus 1. Also requires militarist. So you could actually get a plus 3 enclave capacity. Kaska, thank you very much. Welcome to Sweden. Thank you very much for the 4 month resubscription. We've also got Shulael coming in with a 10 month resub. 10 months on the day of the first stream from Sweden. Nice. Thank you for that. Paladin of Ibuki coming in with a nine-month resub. Good to see you again. Hope you're settling in well and that the hotel bed is comfy. It's actually not too bad. Um, the problem I actually have is the mattress keeps on slipping across. And because it's such a big mattress, I can't, like, push it back against the wall. Like, it's it's the top layer of the mattress. Like, the, the box bed is one bit. And then there's the mattress that kind of sits on top of it. And I can't just push it because it just bends upwards. Uh, oh. Where are we up to? Shavrash coming in with a 32 month resub. Thank you very much for the ongoing support there, Shavrash. And then Smithus coming in with a 7 month primary sub. Thank you very much for that, Smithus. Good to have you back. Good to be back. Can't you get uh, more than 3 cap if you go Vassal Origin? Choose military focus. Does the Vassal Origin give you cap? No, it doesn't. It just starts you. Oh, hang on, is there one that starts you with vassals? Uh, 
That just starts you as a federation. So does that. Scion. No, there isn't one that starts with a vassal. Can you get three, more than three mercap if you go vassal origin, choose a military focus. Now where you start as the vassal and choose to be military. Oh, with the bulwark. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know much about the, the vassal stuff. Probably equipped to watch the stream with a cup of tea. I'll drink to that. Cheers. Wow, that's going cold pretty quickly. <laughs> One thing I am going to miss is not having the uh, the teapot. I'm going to have to keep getting up and getting the tea boiling. Hopefully the kettle's not too loud. <laughs> we'll find out. So this is actually a good question. What? Oh no, we're going to do subterranean, weren't we? Then I think we're going to do megacorp. We're going to need to be at least militarist in some way. We want to have the naval contractors because it's just good business. Plus master crafters. Because this way we're just never going to have to build cities. Ever. Although cities comes with clerks. I'm not sure that's necessarily going to be so important. Ah, uh, spirit, spiritualist is for the church stuff. We're not doing that. What is the mechanic? Is it a building that recruits mercenaries and provides money? Don't know, Llewellyn. Uh, that's something we're going to find out. <laughs> I think it is like mercenary companies, which you can foster. And then they go out and do stuff. Hey, Tuna. How are you doing? Oh, that's true. Crafters are also trade value. The MCs is army stuff. I'm not that interested in the army stuff. So yeah, I think I'm going to go Mastercraft. We're going to go Naval Contractor, Mastercraft, Dwarves. What are we going to call ourselves? Is that what their name is? Of Tonga? The Boat Dwarves? Because we're basically Boat Dwarves. Is that how you spell it though? And what kind of dwarves are they? Obsidian dwarves or gold dwarves or ebony dwarves or whatever. <clears throat> Has a eh, over the U. Um, I have no idea how to do that. How about I just copy and paste? Aha! Oops. There we go. It's not Swedish. Swedish doesn't have a triangle. Sweden has the double dot over the O, double dot over the A, and a little circle over the A. Just those three. Copper dwarves.
Um, I'm just going to get rid of the prefixes. I don't like them that much. Pretty cool names. Let's use those. Traits. So we are cave dwellers. Species minimum habitability plus 50%. Oh, so we don't care about habitability. That's interesting. Minerals from jobs plus 15. Empire size from pops plus 10. Biological pop growth minus 20. So we're going to be slow growing. Which again is a good thing because it means that uh, buildings aren't going to be so much of a problem. That was the issue we had with the aquatics, is we had just too big a population. So we could be industrious, but I feel like that already is tied into Cave Dweller anyway. Natural engineers, possibly. Talented. It's pretty easy to get the leader level cap though. Traditional. That's going in the book. Strong? I would say strong. Yeah, worker pop, resource output, and army damage. Dwarves are strong. Communal. Nah. Charismatic? Definitely not. Conformist? They are pretty traditionalist. They also live a long time. They're resilient. They're very resilient. Strong and resilient. Because, yeah, I, I agree. Um, enduring is good. But the problem we had with that previously is we wanted to upgrade to Venerable and you basically got to wait until the end of the game to get Venerable. I think this is good. Strong and resilient. Homeworld name. Oh no, that's Ovdil Tunga. And mountainous. Arid? Alpine? Huzzah! Alpine. Mountainous world. City appearance. Um, Lithoid. Origin. Subterranean. Government and ethics. Okay, so we have to be militarist, but we still have two ethic points available. Use the bigger screen for the game, small screen for Discord and chat. Slight problem with that is the keyboard is attached to the screen. Because it's a laptop. Huzzah! So not really workable. Gala! Thank you very much for the 32 month primary sub. Very much appreciate that. How is Sweden treating you? It's treating me pretty well so far. Need to have a bit more time to go out and explore and things like that. Um, hung out with my colleagues, they seem cool. Uh, dealt with my first crisis, which was fun. Felt like I was in Hearts of Iron for that. Um, yeah, good so far. So I've been here, this is my second week. So the first week I spent mostly just exploring. Um, I'm not in the area that I want to be. Like I said, I'm in a, a temporary hotel at the moment, which is a fair ways out of the city. Well, it's not a fair ways, but it's, it's outside of the, like, the... Is it? Is it in the inner ring or is it outside the inner ring? I actually can't remember. Let me have a look. Where's my map? There it is. Uh, 
yeah, I'm outside the ring road. So I'm still within Stockholm technically, but it's like Greater Stockholm as opposed to Stockholm. And then Paradox Interactive is on the southern island called Sodomolm, uh, which is about a 40 minute ish commute for me. So it's like a 15 minute walk to the tram, well not the tram, the, the underground, it's like 10 minutes on the train and then 15 minutes on the other end. Which is a bit of a pain, but it's, it's not the end of the world. And then when I have my permanent apartment in July, that's going to be on Sodom Olm. So it's going to be about a 20 minute walk into the office every day. No public transport required. And then more importantly, that's also where all the restaurants and the bars and everything else to do is. Like where I'm now is super freaking quiet. It's a really, really just residential region uh, with basically no restaurants or bars or anything like that. There is a Fika place on the corner. I am. Um, <laughs> this is so annoying. I live right opposite a pizza place. It's the worst rated pizza in Stockholm. <laughs> so I haven't dared go there yet. At some point I'll probably try it, but I need to be a bit brave for that one, I think. Especially if I actually want to go into work the next day. What else? Yeah, it's just that it's quiet here, that's all. Went out with my colleagues last night, that was fun. And the uh, the rumours about Paradox liking karaoke are unfortunately very true. But yeah, Lincoln Park in the end, in the end nailed it. Need a solid tankard of mead to go with the pizza. Now that's another thing, Stockholm is actually really, well it's not really hard, but it's somewhat difficult to get um, alcohol. So there are government owned off licenses effectively, which are only open until like, I think 6pm or 7pm, something like that. There's a very short window of opportunity after you finish for the day. And that is the only place you can get um, like beer and wine and whiskey or whatever else you want to drink, except in bars. And from bars you can't take it home. So if you want to stock up for a personal supply, you have to go to one of these government owned off licenses. So I just haven't bothered. I drink when I'm out and that's all. It's a real paradox. How can paradox still karaoke and still retain me? Ma musical geniuses like Andreas Waldertoft. I don't know man, I don't know. If you take the ferry to Turku, you can buy beer here in Finland. Oh, you can buy me beer in Finland. That's tempting. I mean, actually, one of the things I really do want to do, and it's why I've kind of purposely not scheduled stuff for the weekends, is I do want to go to, like, Finland, Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia, Norway, Denmark. I want to go exploring. I'm in a new area. It's cool. And also just other bits of um, Sweden, like Gothenburg. Is it the Swedes who put bananas in the pizza, or do I misremember? They do. So I have had one Swedish pizza which was after the release of Overlord because I was streaming so I was in the office quite late. Didn't actually get home that day until like 9pm and they provided pizza but I had a kebab pizza which was good. It's basically just kebab on a pizza. Good combo. Hey Lady Magnus, how are you doing? Welcome back. Look at you streaming at normal time. Oh, I know, oh. this is weird. I also like the fact that I've been streaming for almost an hour and still haven't really achieved anything yet. <laughs> doing too busy just chatting. Gothenburg's where your ancestors come from. Nice. Hey, Mastani gifted us up to Lady Magnus. Lady Magnus, welcome to the Maudlings. Good to have you joining us. We built species. Yeah, that's true. We still need to decide what the other ethics are going to be. Um, I don't know that we necessarily want to be fanatic uh, militarists. I don't think we do. Xenophobes? Certainly not. If anything, we want to be xenophiles. Egalitarian, unity gain, specialist pop resource output, materialist, but materialist in this in instance is science as opposed to spiritualism. Science is important, but it's not critical. Pacifism, definitely not. Xenophile, yeah, we want to be xenophile. Envoys and trade value, for sure. Authoritarian, 
Dwarves are pretty authoritarian. And the spiritualist. I don't think we want to be fanatics in the files. I think we're going to go authoritarian. We are xenophile dwarves. We can even tolerate elves. As long as they pay us. Need to get me a good tea mug. Yeah, that's that's one thing that's bad about this hotel thing. Like, all the mugs are really small. Like, water glass is that? It's tiny. It's like a shot glass. Another thing I need to get is a teapot, but I'm not going to do that until I moved into the uh, the main place. Like, that's the problem. There are all these things that I want to get to upgrade my apartment and living conditions, but I don't want to do it until I actually move into the main apartment because I know I'm just going to have to carry it all, and I am not looking forward to having to do that. What about subterranean? We are subterranean. Okay, advisor. Voice. As the learned say, what's yours is mine, and what's mine is also mine. This channel is now under military control. Pebbles roll downhill, mountains stand tall. Rubble it in, why don't you? Cry havoc, and let's... Maintaining state cohesion as we venture into space. Maintaining state cohesion. Priority alert. This pre -re I may be an artificial intelligence, but I share... Automation. Open access. Shared wealth. With these, we shall unite the stars in song. Communist capitalist space dwarves? Missing my blue mark. I am missing my blue mark. That's something I'm going to get shipped to me when I move. Ikea when I get to the other place of Class Olsen. Yeah, exactly. I need to see what I what I have there. Like that's part of the problem. I have no idea what I'm actually gonna have. Techno. The laws of science govern all. That really makes sense. Democracy sure is an endless struggle. I serve the faithful. What is a single voice? System diagnostic completed. Also. We all have the makings of greatness in us. Honest work means hard labor, no wages, and no fun. I prefer to make a living by more adventurous means. This is remarkably unaquatic. Our course is charted. Oh, Cast no. off all moorings <laughs> and hard You know what? That makes greatness sense. Awaits. We're warship builders, it's what we do. They're pirates, yeah. That's what we are. Alright, done. Flag. Okay, this is the hard one. Um. Possibly the anchor? Big fan of that one. I do like that symbol. And possibly that one. I like that one more. That was the uh, the paradox, which I thought was a pretty good symbol for them. Second symbol. Oh, pirates. Yeah, we have to get down to that still. Imperial. I mean, these could be like taken to be ship symbols. Legion, nah. Lithoid, nah. Necroid, nah. Ornate. That's like a more modernist anchor, possibly. Paradox. Oh, that's Paradox um, Arctic, isn't it? I think we'll also work on Stellaris. Second Pirate. That one. 
Yeah, I guess it's like the uh, the dwarven helmet with a beard. You know what? Yeah, I see that. I can see that. Plantoid. Nah. Pointy. Mm, nah. Except we're not really terrors from the deep. You know what? Yeah, I like that one. Actually, it's kind of similar in style to that, which I like. Yeah, we haven't changed his character yet. Okay, then colors. My favorite color is blue. No, yellow! Gold and orange. Memory of Mercedes. Probably Stellaris' most beautiful song. <laughs> You know, it was actually a lot of fun doing the stream with Unders, uh, Knorr, who of course was the one who came up with Mercedes and the Blorg alongside Wiz. It was a true privilege playing Stellaris with Unders. <laughs> I feel like having that one would be a bit too cliche. That one's quite good, it's like a bit of a mountain type symbol. Oh, I like that. It's kind of the world above and then the world below. It doesn't really go with the uh, the icon though. Oh, there we go. Yeah, in terms of just framing, that works better. And then colors, 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 colors. Brown and gold, gold and black, peach and red, blue and white. I don't think I've ever used white in this game. That's quite bright. Blue and silver? Black and silver? The only problem is black is a bit hard to see on the screen. Quite like that. Blue and silver. Blue because we're both dwarves. Silver because we're dwarves. It's Mithril. It's Imperial. I gotta admit, Necroid does look really cool. Lloyd's quite cool. Mammalian? Humanoid's quite cool. There we go, there's the big bushy beard. Mm. 
It looks a bit too aristocratic. I'm trying to get something mer merchanty. Eh, probably that. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot about this. Because we're a subterranean origin, our background is actually underground. Something a little bit corporate, maybe a bit of a militaristic style. That's what I'm after here. We're master craftsmen. Yeah, let's let's do that. Name. Mordred Thorgood. Chief Executive Officer. No. Um, we don't have titles. Ruler title. Came over from Benjamin to say congrats on getting to Sweden, Mordred. Thank you, Kejabu. Is Ben streaming as well? I actually have no idea what his schedule is like these days. I guess because it's a Saturday, it makes sense if he is streaming today. Lead designer. Chief engineers. Yeah. Bender's life, cool. Profit maker. I'm thinking of something. Oh, Guildmaster's quite good. I'm thinking like Chief Aero. Aero Engineer or. Aeronaut. Chief Aeronaut. Plutarch. Plutarch's good. Make that for male and female. Plutarch's a really good name. You know what, I'm actually, that's <laughs> such a good name. I'm just going to skip over to my world building stuff and just make a note of that. Um, where the hell do I save that? That is a good question, because that's a cool title for one of the Dwarven Kingdoms. Yoink in that one. Vault Master, that's good too. Now nah, I like Plutarch. Plutarch does everything I want it to do. Alright, so we have Ulfdil Tunga. I'm pretty happy with this. Copper Dwarf, Humanoid, Cape Dweller, Strong Resilient, Mega Corp, Naval Contractors, Mastercraft Inc., Authoritarian, Xenophile, Militarists, and we're Subterranean. Do again. Oh yeah, trade value. <laughs> yeah, we want that. Done. Wait, did that save? Yes, it saved. Okay, galaxy. Now here's the thing. I actually kind of want to play on a bit of a bigger galaxy than I did before. Although, although, we still only ever visited like half of it. But I feel like because we're actually going to be diplomatic, we're going to have more of a reach. Federations and stuff is going to be more of a an impact. Cold digger. <laughs> oh look, it's a sweet plain Stellaris. Normal. We're not going tall. Well, actually, we're going deep. We're going to dip dig deeply and greedily. Maybe we'll go large. Or we could just bump up the number of AI empires. I 
really don't like the advanced AIs. Fallen Empires we do definitely one. I might actually go for three of them. Yeah, that sounds good, because then we're almost guaranteed to have a uh, war in heaven. And all of these can stay the same. Let's have a couple more primitives. Let's go for two. We'll up the crisis strength. make the world a little bit more challenging. Less space to expand. More conflict. Difficulty. Commodore? Commodore or Admiral? Yeah, there's no air. I don't know, you guys probably have a much better handle on difficulty. Like, what is my standard for difficulty at this game now? And no, I'm not switching on Iron Man. <laughs> Hell no. While you guys debate difficulty, I'm going to go and start another tea boiling. You're saying hyperlane density. Yeah, I can do that. Sure. Mastani, thank you very much for the gifted sub to Bamboozle Ballet. Appreciate that, thank you. Bamboozle, welcome back to the Mordlings. Captain was scaling on, nice mid difficulty. Scaling off will make that harder, but give you an idea of the baseline captain. Oh yeah, it's supposed to be spiral. Hang on, what's the difference? Oh no, elliptical, I think is what I prefer. Yeah, because spiral is really easy to get cut off.
Now I'm going to go elliptical. I literally did just tab. <laughs> That's what I did. That's how I was looking stuff up. I think it's getting worse. <laughs> you can't see it at all. Because right now, my cursor is on the topmost G. It's like the very top of the curve of the G for galaxy size. Yeah, and the further down I go, the further away it gets. So right now it's in the bottom right corner of play. And it's basically off the screen. Which will finally get the stream started, uh, the game started, and then the stream will be over. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's, we've been live for an hour and a half. Oh, shoot, I was going to record this. Ah, I have to, mm, you know, I'll start recording now. There we go. <laughs>